Let's take a look at returns based sample weights. So the sample weights for label I equals to the absolute value of the return, which was generated as a result of trading that label, multi multiplied, uh, divided by the number of concurrent labels at, uh, at, at time I. So we have previously discussed why using the returns is so important for um, uh, for measuring the uh, uh, the accuracy score and to fit uh, your model. So we use the absolute value because we need to use not only positive impact on your PNL account, but, 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 but we would also like to give higher weights to extremely negative weights to your uh, PNL account uh, by using the absolute value of the uh, return with, with which, which was generated as a result of trading that label. So why do we divide our uh, sample return by the number of concurrent labels? So we have previously discussed the concept of concurrency. And actually that is the reason why our data is not our IID because we do have several concurrent labels uh, in our data set as a result of our labeling procedures. And that's why we would like to give higher weights to those clean labels which do not overlap with others because they are much closer to IID and the algorithm can extract more information from them. So that's why return-based sample weights divide absolute values, absolute value of the return by the number of concurrent labels. Means that if the label is concurrent with many others, it will have lower sample weights despite the fact that the return of the, of the label itself is relatively high. So let's take a look how ML FinLab function is used in, uh, uh, in, in calculating sample weights. So as you can see, we take as input our barrier ev events or sample uh, info sets, meaning that we need the index of our labels and the T1 when the label uh, value was uh, generated, meaning that either of, uh, for example, for trans scanning uh, the index of top uh, regression, for bearer events, the, the first time when the bearer event was hit, we use the close prices, and uh, we can also uh, generate a multi-core uh, calculation of weights by specifying the number of cores, uh, uh, which are used to calculate by setting the num stress parameter. So get weights by return uh, function generates return-based sample weights. Now we can take a look at time decaying weights. What we have also discussed uh, previously that we would like to give higher weights to uh, the most recent data, but we need to understand how we would like to, to penalize uh, our old data. And this can be set up by the, by the DK parameter. So as you can see on the plot um, on uh, this picture, these are the sample weights uh, for, uh, our, uh, for our data set based on various DK uh, parameter value. If we use the uh, decay, time decay weights, we can use get weights by time decay. And here this function has the decay parameter, meaning that uh, if you would like to, um, um, if you would like to set, how do you penalize the oldest data? So if we go back into, into the previous plot, we can see that actually if we say our, um, uh, uh, if we set our decay to, for example, to zero, it will me it means that we don't have um, the uh, time decay weights and all weights assigned to our labels will be the same. So it is equal to sample weights equals non-parameter setting. By uh, increasing the decay, you uh, will increase the uh, way you penalize oldest weights. So the default value, which is quite uh, good enough and widely used is DK, which equals to 0 0.5. You can start off with this, set this setting and understand uh, how your model performs based on various values of your DK. Now let's go into modeling. So we need to understand how to set up various uh, bagging or boosting models and actually what kind of models are used in financial machine learning. But first of all, let's take a look at um, uh, two types of models, of ensemble type of models, 
uh, in uh, machine learning, which are called bagging and boosting. So if we take a look at this picture, we can see that the bagging uh, is a type of model when we have one classifier, for example, decision tree classifier or linear regression, and we trade many of those classifiers on various random subsets of data. And after that, we average the predictions which were generated by uh, each uh, uh, of that to tackle the problem of overfit. Because in this case, you have quite diverse universe of various big weak classifiers which were trained on different subsets of your data. So they seem uh, different scenarios uh, of, your, um, of your data set. And after that, when you ever the prediction, you solve the problem of overfitting one um, classifier because overfitting one classifier is much easier comparing to overfit, uh, comparing to overfitting, uh, for example, 1,000 classifiers. Boosting wor works in a different way. So the boosting uh, comparing to bagging is the con uh, consecutive uh, sequential iterative process. So what it does, it first fits your initial classifier. And after that, it analyzes, with, it analyzes the number of misclassified points and gives more sample weights to those misclassified points to generate the, so the, the second um, uh, the second uh, weak classifier, and uh, it uh, continues to retrain your model until some threshold uh, uh, condition is met. So comparing to bagging, your uh, boosting uh, model solves the problem of underfitting, because if you underfit your weak classifier on the first uh, iterative step, you have more steps to improve the the accuracy and prediction of your classifier by giving more sample ways to misclassified ways. So actually, what you should choose between bagging and boosting, there is actually no one clear way or one clear model that, uh, that beats them all. But uh, let's see um, what uh, Marcus Lopez de Prado says in that case. So bagging, as we have discussed, addresses overfitting while boosting addresses underfitting problem. Overfitting in, is often a greater concern than underfitting, and it is not difficult to overfit an ML algorithm to financial data because of low signal to noise ratio. Furthermore, begging can be parallelized while generally boosting requires sequential one. So in terms of computational, um, of optimizing the computa computational power and uh, computational speed, begging is easier to parallelize and to speed up compared to boosting, firstly. And secondly, begging solves the key problem which, with, which each quantitative researcher in financial ML faces, overfitting. Let's take a look at a very interesting uh, example, how, how begging can be used for scalability. So several popular machine learning algorithms do not scale well with the sample size. For example, support vector sh um, machines is a very good example of that. So SVM has a um, quadratic complexity, and with increasing the number of the number of data point, the amount of time you need to spend to train that model incre increased uh, uh, in a uh, quadratic way. So uh, it the complexity of SVM is O big of n squared. So if you attempt to fit an SVM on millions of observations, it may take a while until the algorithm converges. And even once it has converged, there is no guarantee that the solution is a global optimum or that it is not overfit. One practical approach is to build a begging algorithm on top of SVM, where base estimator belongs to a class that does not scale well with sample slice, size like SVM. So one of the key advantages also of begging that it can be used on top of any machine learning algorithm uh, you would like to. So you can create begging algorithm on top of decision tree, which is quite a well-known practice, which is called ensemble learning. And out of that approach, there are many uh, algorithms like random forest classifier, extra trees classifier, etc. But actually you can beg neural networks, SVMs, linear regressions. So any algorithm can be, can be uh, used as input to begging classifier. So when we define that base estimator, SVM in this case, 
will impose a tight early stopping condition. So for example, in Escalern's SVM implementation, you can set a very low value for maximum iteration parameter, say uh, um, a 100,000 iterations. So in this case, because you use already a subset of data, you don't need that many iterations to converge for the algorithm, and you can train many SVM uh, classifiers or regressors as a part of, of your backend classifier and to train them in parallel. In this case, you can uh, you are able on the on the one hand to use the power of SVM, but on the other hand, by using the backend classifier, you can overcome the process the problem of um, low uh, of high complexity of the algorithm and long time needed to train that type of algorithm, and that's how uh, backend can be used. So as we have discussed, you can back, for example, uh, your neural networks to get uh, better um, predictions. So now let's take a look at the, at, at the final part of our lecture, understand how can you set up your model in financial machine learning setting. As we have previously discussed, we mostly uh, would like to, spe to specialize on begging type of mo uh, machine learning models which are either bagging classifier or regressor or random forest classifier or regressor. So we will first take a look at how we can set up base estimator. So we can either specify base estimator as random forest classifier with number of estimators equal to one, auto max features, we use entropy criterion, we set bootstrap equal to false, and class weight equal to balance some sample if your uh, data set is not balanced. And here, let's stop and uh, let's stop and understand what this uh, setup does. So as a base estimator, you can either use your decision tree, which is the original setting, or you would like to use random forest classifier. But why should you even use random forest classifier if you have decision tree? So the power of random forest classifier because it randomizes not only the number of data points which are used to train your model, but also the subset of features which are used. So random forest classifier uh, adds an extra layer of uh, randomness into your model by using the random number of points from bagging plus the random subset of features. So when we use random forest classifier, with n estimators equals uh, being equal to one, we go back into a decision tree. We set bootstrap to false by saying that the this decision tree should use the whole data. So not the random subset of data, but the whole data set to train in your model. And you still have that power of random subset of features which are used to, to fit your model. So basically the setup means that you would like to set up a decision tree classifier, which has the possibility to use the random subset of features to train your model. So here there are several pro tips, uh, uh, which can be used uh, when you set a machine learning model. So first of all, you can set a parameter of max features to a relatively low va uh, lower value as a way of forcing uh, discrepancy between trees. So what does it mean? If you say, for example, uh, set max features, for, for example, to one in your bagging classifier, it will train many decision trees, which have only one feature available to predict. And the result, your uh, universe of classifiers will, will be quite diverse and they will use very different information from uh, from uh, various uh, decision trees. And as a result, your predictions will be quite diverse and it helps you to tackle the problem of overfitting. You can also use regularization parameter, which is present in uh, decision trees, which is called mean weight fraction weight. So you can set this regularization parameter to a relatively high value. Let's say, for example, 5%. What you can also do is to set a max samples to the average sample uniqueness of your data set. So how every sample uniqueness uh, is calculated. So every sample uniqueness is a 
uh, derivative value from the number of concurrent uh, labels in your data set. So what it does on the first step, you calculate the number of concurrent labels for each label. And after that, you calculate the harmonic uh, mean of your um, uh, number of concurrent traits. And as a result, you have the average sample uniqueness. And if you set max samples to every sample uniqueness, you will use not the uh, whole data set as a random subset, but basically link between, uh, create a link between the average sample uniqueness of your data set and the number of, label, number of samples which you give to your decision tree models in your begging classifier. But now let's uh, set uh, this slide. And remember that this is the slide for setting up base estimator in, uh, for begging classifier. So begging classifier is a way to average the predictions among weak, weak so-called weak, weak classifiers, which are also called base estimators. So now we can set up begging model. So for example, we can set up begging classifier on top of uh, your either first base classifier or second base classifier and uh, make a number of estimators equal to one thousand. This is one of the also the reasons why we would like to play around with random force classifiers with number of estimators being equal to one, because bagging classifier in SQL implementation does not have max samples way max samples parameter available. So if you uh, because maximum uh, max samples parameter is available only in random force classifier. So how you can can you actually overcome this? you can use random force classifier with n estimators equal to one, set maximum samples in this base estimators and put it into bagging classifier. And this way, there is a quite um, uh, tricky way to overcome the problem that bagging classifier does not have max samples parameter available. On the other hand, you can just use the random force classifier with number of estimators equal to, for example, 1,000, criterion equal to entropy, max features uh, equal to auto, and class weight uh, being equal to either balanced or balanced sum sample. So let's also discuss several pro tips uh, for uh, random forest um, setup. And you should always fix random state in your bagging classifier and re random forest classifier to be able to reproduce your research which is extremely important because you need to make sure that your research results and your production model uh, are the same. In this case, uh, you need to fix your random state. But not that many people know that because a random force classifier, as we have discussed, use, uses the random subset of features because the subset is random. You have the extra layer of randomness and uh, by setting random state to a fixed value, you do not fully uh, fix the randomness of your uh, random force classifier. So the, uh, what is the pro tip for using random force classifier is to sort alphabetically your features because uh, I have um, added the GitHub issue because the feature order matters. So if you use random force classifier, and to, you train that on one uh, subset or, or, or on your data set, you generate, for example, a log loss score of uh, 30%. But if you shuffle those uh, features in your data set and fit the same model on the same data set, probably your log loss score will differ, uh, not that much, but it will slightly differ, despite the fact that you have, uh, that you have set your random state. This is because you, you actually changed the next uh, extra layer of, of randomness in your, in your data, the order of your features. So the order of the features is actually the second random state in your random force classifier. So if you, would, you, if you would like to always be able to reproduce your research, just sort alphabetically your features. And this way, this is a way to fix your random state in terms of random feature selection because you do know that your features are all also sorted alphabetically. And in this case, you won't see that type of issue that 
your model uh, in uh, uh, research uh, set and when you use it in a different notebook with different uh, features order the uh, resulting uh, log loss will slide diff will will be slightly different for example uh, for uh, two or three uh, digits uh, after the uh, sign so how can you filter out those uh, how, how can you sort alphabetically features just use numpy unique on top of your x because numpy unique not only uh, deletes duplicates from your columns but also sorts them alphabetically so in this lecture we have discussed how to cross validate your machine learning models and why k fault cross validation fails in finance but purged and embargoed k fault cross validation works have also discussed how to use various sample weights in order to score your model and to train your model. And we have also discussed how uh, to set up various models uh, in uh, Begin classifier and random forest classifier, which tackle the problem of overfitting in financial machine learning. And what are the interesting uh, peculiarities of random forest classifier?